It is Virgin Media Park in Cork City that we are today as Ireland and Wales meet in round three of this year's women's tournament, both still targeting a first win of the campaign. So a big weekend, and these are the games taking place over the course of round three. Already England have kept their opponents scoreless for the second time in three games. They have hammered Scotland to make it three from three. Ireland hosting Wales, France taking on the Italians. So this is the table as things stand at the moment in this year's Guinness Six Nations Championship. England three from three, as expected. France just in behind them, Ireland and Wales, with just a single bonus point apiece to show for their opening two matches. Well, it's an absolutely beautiful afternoon in Cork City. A little bit of a breeze as well. And of course, on this 4G surface, perfect playing conditions as well. Hopefully conducive to a very good game of rugby. Well, there is the wind predictor for this afternoon. It is uh, a little bit one-sided as things stand at the moment. The elements will be changing over the course of the game. And we are almost ready to welcome the two sets of players out onto the surface here in Cork City. Alongside me this afternoon is former Ireland international Grace Stabbin. Two teams for whom the result matters above all else. They need to leave today with a victory. Yeah, huge game for both teams. Both have losses. Uh, you know, obviously Wales played a more difficult opponent with England last, so they'll have learnt a lot from that. Ireland put in a good performance from France, but it all really comes down to today. And whoever wins here has an opportunity and maybe getting towards that towards spot, which will bring them to the WXV and then obviously towards World Cup qualification. Well, Wales, for their part, restored uh, some measure of positivity in their defeat to England at Bristol a couple of weeks ago, undoing at least some of the pain their opening weekend loss to the Scots will have caused them, particularly Owen Cunningham will have been pleased with the manner in which Wales defended throughout against England in Bristol. And at no point did they look close to throwing in the towel. So while it was a heavy defeat in the end and an expected defeat, Wales will certainly have felt a lot better about themselves than they did when leaving the field after their opening weekend defeat to the Scots. Well, Ireland have now lost seven consecutive games in this tournament. That will be significant in terms of the damage done, but confidence might be in short supply. Optimism does remain. Their new head coach, Scott Beeman, will have seen some shoots of progress in the defeats of the French and Italians over the opening two rounds. And they certainly had their chances against Italy, who are likely deserved winners, Grace. But Ireland know there were a couple of key points in that game when they could have put a very different complexion on the scoreline. Yeah, they had opportunities to get the, the scores in, especially in the first 20 minutes. They were camped in the Italian 22, and they just didn't turn those possession and good areas into points. And then when they got that last try, they had an opportunity to maybe go ahead, get a try and, and kick the conversion to, to go ahead. But it wasn't to be. And, you know, they have to cut down on the handling errors. They 28 last uh, the last game and 17 turnovers. So they want to improve that. Well, here they go, on and led by their co-captain, Adele McMahon, and her fellow co-captain, Dorothy Wall, in behind, or Sam Monaghan, rather, in behind. Scott Beeman in his first season and his first Guinness Six Nations Championship will have had an extra couple of weeks to spend with these players to work on their new combinations, to work on the areas of the game that were in greatest need of improvement and to maybe bring a little bit of fluency to their attack. As they continue to defend well, that has definitely improved on last year. So as we edge closer to kickoff, we'll take a little pause for the anthems.
So a wonderful atmosphere, a big crowd looking to roar Ireland onto a first win of this year's championship. Let's take a look at the two teams. Just the one change for Ireland. Co-captain Adele McMahon back into the side in the back row, replacing Grace Moore with Aoife Wafer moving to the blind side. Dorothy Wall and Sam Mullahan remain together in the second row. Neve Jones flanked in the front row by Linda Newgang and Christy Haney. I don't change back division. Avian Riley and Dane O'Brien at half back. And your Breen and Eve Higgins are in the centre while on the wing. Bevan Parsons will be looking to take her chances, having given up a couple of opportunity against the Italians at the RDS. Well, Wales make four changes to the 15 that began the round two defeat to England. Alicia Joyce Butchers returns to the pack, joining Beth Lewis and Alex Callender in the back row. Georgia Evans and Abby Fleming are paired in the second row again. The front row is Salisa Tuatapalu replacing Donna Rose, who drops to the bench. There are also changes to the back line. Johan Kuringa opting for the more experienced Kira Bevan at scrum half. She joins Cleeky George at half back. While a fit again, Jasmine Butcher's choice is recalled in the wing. Lisa Neumann misses out. Hannah Jones captains the side in the centre. Well, there are additions to the Irish bench, Cleena Maloney and the uncapped Shannon Ikehefer. Well, for Wales, there could be a test debut for 19 year old back rower Gwen Hopkins. be a big afternoon for Cleona Maloney who has not played for Ireland in quite some time going all the way back to the win over Japan at the Autumn Internationals of November 2021. The Wales would have expected to have had at least one win under their belt coming into round three. The shock against the Scots I'm sure is still lingering in the system. Ireland looking to win this terrible run of this competition. They've never been beaten eight successive times in the Women's Six Nations Championship. That is a trend they're looking to end today. There's our match referee, Sarah Cox, and we are almost ready to go on a perfect afternoon in Cork City. So show me behind the kicker. So away we go. A swirling breeze potentially into the face of Ireland as things stand at the moment. Tackle! And it is there for Bevan. George puts a bit more depth on it. The Welsh backline getting into gear immediately. And a first touch for Joyce Butchers, who was sorely missed against England. She brings electric Tackle! pace to those wide channels. And it's a strong counter drive from Ireland, which they have been penalised for and Wales have an early penalty. Return to your feet, or roll out. Yeah, Ireland had to cover across well there. Brittany Hogan just staying on her feet, doing the drive and the contact, ending up on top of Jasmine Joyce, but then has to roll away quicker than that. The and she was just slowing that Welsh ball down. And there's two errors from Ireland, you know, not gathering the, the kickoff on the full, and then a penalty there, and suddenly Welch are in a, uh, the Welch are in a really strong position, a place where they love line out, they love mauling Wales? it, and a place that Ireland Wales. have struggled to it's defend. A little, little bit quicker, please. And that is no doubt an aspect of the game. They would have focused on significantly during the week. Karis Phillips, who has got a couple of tries in the past against Ireland, finds her target. And now the ball is back under the right arm of the Harlequins hooker. Initial drive is repelled by Ireland, but off goes Phillips. Such a powerful ball carrier. But Ireland got there. Really good work. They've turned it over. And that's a little win for the Irish defence a few minutes in. Yeah, it was a really strong maul, and Karis Phillips just breaks away there, which is really good, but slightly isolated. So then support player having to come in from the side and straight off their feet. Um, so Sarah Cox is key on that. You can see, I think it's Bevan, um, Kira Bevan went straight in off her feet and uh, well penalised by, by Sarah Cox there. You can do that over there. Time is off. All right. Karis Phillips just look for that try line. Yeah. The laces on her right boot opened. So Dan O'Brien finds a really good touch, kicking into that breeze. Just drop over. Yeah, that's it. Come on. Walk, Don't walk. stand in front of that. Well, there is the Ireland head coach, his first year in charge. Okay, let's not creep. Little green okay. shoots of progress, baby steps after them, picking up okay. an Irish squad. His in confidence was on the floor. So he was beginning from a pretty stay low up, bar. That's an excellent set piece. 
relief away for who carried the ball with such venom at times against Italy, Outside. taking the responsibility in that regard immediately. Thank you, George. Out we come. George, that beautifully off the outside of a right boot. That's a really good yes, kick. Play, play. We're wasting no time as Dan O'Brien. And here come Ireland, held on by Lauren Delaney, and then it's Wafer again with the carry. No one carried the ball more frequently than her against Italy. And taken on by Dorothy Wall. Back it goes to O'Brien. Taken by the Welsh fullback Jenny Heskett, just 21 years of age. This just her third cap. Okay, we're all done, we're all done. Phillips. It's there for Bevan, and now George. Oh, a bit of a breakdown, it looked forward, but I somehow they managed to keep the ball off the deck. Okay. Ireland will get the scrum, their first put in of the game. And statistically, albeit maybe a little skewed, Grace, by the fact that Wales played England in round two, they have the weakest scrum of the championship through the opening two rounds. Yeah, they do, and it'll be a, a real crucial you know, set piece here for them. We know they're strong in the line out, but can they, you know, hold on to their own possession in a scrum? And this is a really good opportunity for Ireland. You know, they have options both sides. Wales have to cover that and cover the kick. But great variety from Ireland there, you know, kicking the counter attack, the quick line out, and Eve away for what carries from her to get over the line out. And the same Karis Phillips, huge hits coming in from her, you know, and getting over that game line for Wales. And down the open side they go. O'Brien clipping one into the 22. This could go against her, this bounce. It could go all the way, and Bevan Parsons got there in time to ensure that Jenny Heskin was going to have to touch it down. They've got to be behind you. So it'll They've be a be dropout. Dan O'Brien really using the, the boot at the start of this match and it's just keeping Wales honest. They're one of the teams have been caught for offside mostly and you know for here that's just keeping them honest, stopping that shooting defence. Taken by Evan Riley and she popped it up into the hands of the rampaging Brittany Hogan. O'Brien out towards Higgins. She's put down by Bevan. And now Sam Monaghan driving into that Welsh 22. This is better from Ireland. Ferocious defence from Wales on that occasion. Really good pick up on the scrum half, Riley. And Ireland getting to the edge quickly and cutting inside is Corrigan. O'Brien. Neve Jones. It's a good quick ball for Ireland, but it's broken down now, and Bevan was almost away. No, no, hands away! Ball is there, ball is there. A similar story to the game against Italy, where Ireland put some good phases together, but ultimately an error crept into their game. That's not the greatest of kicks from Joyce Butchers. And it's back towards Cleeky George, and she sees plenty of open space in the Ireland backfield. looking to run this ball back. Again, the first up tackle from Wales is really packing a punch. Monaghan again gets over that game. Line. Good footwork no. from her. Just leave it alone now. Dan O'Brien. Oh, just an awkward one for Heskett. Jasmine Joyce missed the England game with a hamstring strain. Back today, you can see her left leg heavily strapped. Tackle comes in from McMahon and Jugang. Out to come, Green. On side. Use it. George is deep and ready for this, should she be required, but the scrum half Kira Bevan takes the responsibility upon herself, despite being outside her 22. So that's a mistake from her for someone so experienced. Johan Cunningham brought her back into the side for this game, with Zion Jones still in her teens and having just two caps under her belt. 
No. Yeah, and I wonder what she rushed because Sarah you know, Cox had told her to there. use it, and then you know it, it was kind of caught yeah. in under the feet, and maybe she rushed it slightly. I, it's difficult because I thought it was out and ready yeah. to go. Okay. You getting it stuck? Get that, but yeah. it was just just on the board, like just okay. just to keep you yeah. keep you up to date, all right? Well, she's given a detailed explanation there to Kira Bevan. We yeah. mentioned that first up tackle from Wales on a couple of occasions, really. They have hammered into the Irish ball carriers already. Yeah, and that's the, what the likes of Alicia Brutchers brings. We can see her shooting out of that defensive line, so she's cutting off that tackle. So Ireland just need to read that. Every on, so often, Wales have a shooter, right, and if the shooter's up on the person hang you're going to pass to, you have to take it on. You can't just give someone a hospital pass. Eve Jones up against a number of her Gloucester Harpery teammates today. That's not the best throw that she's ever come up with. And Wales looking to counter from deep inside their own 22. Helped on by the captain, Hannah Jones. But Ireland getting there quickly. No, no, Eve, no! And it's certainly an aspect of the game that's improved under Scott Beam with their scramble defence. They are certainly making themselves more difficult to beat. Oh, that's a poor error from Lauren Delaney. Had plenty of time to watch that one into her hands. Yeah, it was a real floater of a kick, wasn't it? The ball was bobbling all over the place, but she'd be really disappointed with that. You have to take that. And obviously, Kira Bevan, you know, going back to Cleeky George, huge clearance from her, and, you know, they've really got the benefit of that sitting into the Irish half now. Well, that's an example of maybe what, not what to do for any budding full-backs out there. She tried to catch it with her hands and her fingertips as opposed to taking it into the chest. A mistake from one of Ireland's most experienced backs. She's part of a sales side that are having Come a on, terrible time of it at the moment. Safe, They've please. lost 10 in a row. She started four of those games. So maybe the international setup right now at least is a better place for her to be. Mind! Set! First put in for Wales in this game. And a cagey enough start. It's a solid Welsh scrum, but really good work from Avian Riley, who made a right nuisance of herself there. Tackle put in by Monaghan, and combination tackle with Brittany Hogan as well. It's all a little bit untidy in the middle of the field. And forcing Wales into giving up some yards here. Cleeky George, little ball back into Karen Lake. They're only giving Wales a bit of a dose of their own medicine She's there. Let go of it, leave it red. That's excellent work from Ireland, not only in the no, first no. tackle which came in from McMahon, but getting there over the ball as well. I and mean, Adele McMahon Green getting the congratulations from her teammates. Yeah, floor. Ireland had really defended that side so well. They matched up the Welsh numbers. And what a tackle by Eve Higgins. She chops at the ankle, she gets the player down early, and then it allows Adele McMahon get straight in over the ball and, and into that jackal position. So a really good turnover for her. She'll be wanting to make an impact after not being selected for the Italy game. Right, step over. She's step taking over. No Don't there, Eve Higgins. And another excellent kick as well from Dan O'Brien, and that's certainly something that's improved in her game. Linda Dugan did well to flick that back onto the Irish side, and stooping for it, taking it on as Dorothy Wall. Sam Monaghan. O'Brien. Bevin Parsons coming in from the left wing to get her hands on the ball. We know what she can do if given just a little bit of space. Riley for O'Brien. Jugai not to take that standing still. Good presentation again. Oh, what a take that is from Sam Monaghan. She tried to get her hands free for an offload. Not sure she was actually the intended recipient of that pass. Jugai with another big carry. Not the best of passes from Avon Riley. And again, we've already mentioned it, Grace, they do put some good phases of rugby together, but there seems to be an inev inevitability about it that the mistake will come. Yeah, and what Wales are so good at slowing the ruck ball down. We've seen it there. Ruck gets slow. Ireland are being yeah, put under pressure. Avian Riley's having to go backwards. Linda Jugang's having to go backwards. And then Ireland are able to get the momentum, have a couple of good carries. 
but Wales are able to set in defence and then when you have that red wall coming up against you, that's just added pressure and then the handling error comes from that. Well, Wales have one of their players receiving treatment. You all good? Can't quite see who it is as yet. Well, what have you made of the opening 11 and a half minutes anyway? Yeah, I think both sides are really testing each other. We've seen a, a really strong start from Wales, exactly you know, capitalising on the yeah. Irish mistakes. They'll be so disappointed that they exactly got it. into the 22 and didn't get a score. It was something that they were disappointed yeah, against England. They so had opportunities then. against just, England just and they just weren't able to put it into points. Go, yeah? uh, Ireland, they're really poking holes in Wales. They're kicking yeah, in behind. They're moving it to the blind. They're, you know, punching holes. So it's great to see Ireland hitting a bit more direct instead of actually uh, drifting, which we saw a lot of in Italy. Go, off we go. Nice work. And there's the inside centre, Karen Lake. Also part of that all-conquering Gloucester, Gloucester Harper side from last season, which it's right in that corner, finished the campaign with the Premiership cool. title. It's 11 minutes gone. In Ireland. Oh, you got contact. Having Send plenty of possession, but there. overall that's been dominated by Wales. The but neither team want. has had a really no, guilt-edged opportunity no, to get the scoreboard ticking over just else? yet. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Right, you ready? Just wait for the binds call, OK? Come on, then. Let's go. It's on, Mom. Leon Cunningham, a number eight in his playing days, a former Welsh underage international. Come on, sides, let's start building. <laughs> Approaching three years since his appointment. A lot more time at the job than that man. Again, Ireland rock solid in that scrum. George. I'm on good back. Yeah, yeah. Another awkward one maybe for Delaney to deal with. Takes the tackle and she's Parsons with her. She could just get it. The ball no, free. No, no. Hint of coming in from the side there from Parsons. Referee happy for play to continue. That was a big hit on McMahon. O'Brien. Haney. There for Riley. Dorothy Wall was skipped, back it goes to O'Brien. Well, that could be heading to the corner. It was taken back inside the Ireland half, so it was never going to be a 50-22, but they have picked up 20 or 30 metres. There's definitely an aspect of her game which has improved, Grace, but you would expect there to be a very quick learning curve for somebody so young. Yeah, it's, it's brilliant, you know, that's such a great kick. Got through a couple of phases, seen the space in behind, and although it wasn't going to be a 50-22, it just puts Wales under pressure in their own half. What I'd like to see now is this line-out sorted out. Either go a short line-out where you're eliminating the, the risk and coming forward, keeping it nice and simple for Neve jo Jones on the throw. The last time it seemed like nobody even jumped. Well, looking down, go to Sam Monaghan. It's not a bad tactic. <laughs> Way for inside to Parsons. Takes two to put her down. And it's another big carry from the number eight, Brittany Hogan. This is better from Ireland. Christy Haney now. Neve Jones dropping that shoulder and trying to gain some yards. Haney again. I just got a knock on from that previous one, so I'm still playing in fact. O'Brien. And now a chance maybe for Wafer. She's got Parsons with her. Wafer might do it. Oh, she has! Oh, there was no stopping Eva Wafer from that close. She is a powerful operator in those areas, the 21-year-old. Her second international try, her second in six Nations Championship rugby. And Ireland get the start they were looking for. Just brilliant execution for Ireland. As you say, Sam Monaghan has been slightly overused, but they managed to regather the ball. And what was great to see was, even though they were going left to right, Ireland uh, realised the space was back out on the left-hand side and they spread it wide. But how straight she runs. She runs so direct. The defence can't drift off her, and then they have to hold out there for, for Bavian so Parsons and just here. pure power and strength. And tackle. Lake won't be happy with her tackle on that. She would have liked to get her down early. We're going to try against the French in round one. That was her first Six Nations start. 
That was two days before her 21st birthday. And she's got one in round three as well. And this kick pretty much as difficult as it gets for Dan yeah, O'Brien. She hasn't made it look very difficult, though. What an extraordinary strike that is. Yeah, Ireland have one of the highest success rates in this Six Nations, 100% so far, and she's keeping that record going. That's six from six now in this Six Nations. Unfortunately, that's also a factor of how, many, how few kicks they've actually had. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> so Ireland getting their noses in front. Well picked off by Haney. He's very much been to the fore in the last four or five minutes when Ireland have got on top. Sam Monaghan. She really has taken on the mantle of that leadership role left by Nicola Friday after she stepped away from the international setup last year. Here's Cleeky George. Wait, stop, no. no Waiting stop. for it is Delaney. And she has shown real willingness to counter attack from deep. Perhaps should have given the ball off to Parsons though. Sorry. Linda Jugai. This is touched on its way through. So everyone on side. Here's George. And inside it goes to Heskett. Needs to straighten up. Tackled by Nave Jones. This is better for Wales, and Alan had to be quick there to close down that channel into which Hannah Jones was running to follow to. Come in off the bench against England, in from the start today. Now George, another weak kick from her, albeit bouncing along makes it an awkward enough for the Irish back three. This time the pass is given by Delaney. Corrigan trying to get down that right-hand side. There's a confidence to the Irish play at the moment that we haven't always seen in the first two games. No, we're done, we're done, we're done. Riley for O'Brien. It was well held by Dorothy Wall. He took ball and player at the same time. O'Brien. A tester for George, who's picked up a good position in the backfield Inside. again. Inside. And she has found a very good touch. Or has she? The last second, that final bounce just took it in towards Dan O'Brien. Inside! And that brings play around about the Irish 10 metre line. Yeah, good kick battle there, wasn't it? And Ireland, it was good to see a bit of pace injected into that counter attack. Um, Jasmine Joyce is reading so well. She's getting into the, the mould of when Dan O'Brien's going to kick. She's pulling back. There was a couple of phases yeah, previously there where Dana hesitated and you could just see Jasmine Joyce pulling back, covering that space in behind. So they just need to watch that. But it's that decision making on the edge, whether you, you draw the defender 2v1 and, and let the likes of Bavian Parsons or Kate, uh, Katie Corrigan flow and go. So they have to keep an eye on that. So well, we're just the one score to show for their efforts, but they've played an awful lot of good rugby in this opening quarter. And you can see the vast majority of their rooks are being concluded between those one and three seconds, which is the barometer on which all good teams measure themselves, Grace, and they can continue that, they'll continue to put pressure on this Welsh defence. Yes, especially when you're playing against the likes of Alex Callender. You know, she's up there with three steals at rook time. You've seen uh, Georgia Evans just in causing havoc. But Ireland are dealing with it very well. The support is connected to the ball carrier, getting right out and, uh, and clearing them. So it's a great to see that score hasn't dropped. The percentage hasn't dropped, uh, especially playing against such a formidable forward pack. So Paris Phillips with the line out. Oh, Sam, and she initially left it there and it was picked off absolutely brilliantly. What a wonderful piece of line out play that was from Adele McMahon. He flew across that line out. 
took it back one handed. Back for O'Brien. Another solid kick from her. Be taken back up by Heskett. Targeted and put down by Gio Gang. Taken on by Gwen Pierce. Good strike and it's all back. And Ireland Strap have the back. ball. Good footwork from Eve Higgins. Put on by Wall to Gio Gang. Almost always getting over that gain line. Riley for O'Brien. Haney. Almost skipping over the tackle of Kira Bevan. Oh, and into the gap goes Riley. Has she got the gas to get there? Needs support. And that support has arrived in timely fashion. Sam Monaghan. You're off it. Ireland have numbers out wide if they can put it through the hands, but they might not need to. Eve Higgins powering over that line. Made her international debut against the Welsh three years ago. She gets her fourth Six Nations Championship try. And a little bit of daylight for Ireland for the first time they can say that in this year's championship. Yeah, and you can just see Ireland starting to play with confidence now. Adele McMahon threw herself up in that line out. Did no care for her own body, just let herself fall. Ireland get that possession, and what great carries. The likes of Linda Dugan getting over the line. But what's amazing here is Avian Riley, her decision making. We've seen sometimes the pass is given, even though Wales are defending really well. But Avian sees the gap, she goes. She's well used to matching up against Jasmine Joyce in the seventh circuit. You know, she holds her feet, she stays strong. And, you know, this is the patience that Ireland didn't have against Italy. You know, what a carry by Eve Higgins. An easy one for Dan O'Brien. Well, Ireland were left smarting by the manner of their defeat last season away to Wales. They were hammered. It was the heaviest defeat they'd suffered at the hands of the Welsh in 24 years and they would have been lining the Welsh up for their trip to Virgin Media Park this afternoon with a point to prove. Maybe a smell of revenge in the air, although the players outwardly wouldn't have spoken about that to the media, Grace, but they're only human. And maybe that was at the back of some of their minds as well because they have started this game so, so well. Yeah, and that's it. This Welsh team are well used to coming back into games, so what they need to do now is make sure that they get back down into that Welsh half. You know, no, don't let the game loosen up. Don't have loose kicks, making sure that, you know, that they come up in a green wall when they do clear the lines. Keep doing the basics well. Here's O'Brien. Inside. So Welsh line out, well inside Ireland territory. Well, one of the big differences between round two and round three is they have taken their chances, and Scott Beam and will be absolutely delighted with that. Yes, Italy overall were the better team in round two and deserve to win, but Ireland left plenty of points out there. Again, Ireland disrupting that Welsh set piece. Neve Jones. No, you're off feet now. O'Brien has that extra second just to assess her options. Down towards Heskett, who's dropped it. And she has looked like she kicked that out in the fall. Eventually, that's the decision the officials come to. So again, Dan O'Brien's kicking game, reaping some benefits for Ireland. Yeah, and what was much better there was there was a lot of hang time, but there was a good uh, Irish chase. Heskett could see that in the corner of her eye and then rushed the kick slightly, you know, and just didn't get it uh, spot on. But good decision, but just not the accuracy. Well, having disrupted the Welsh line out, Ireland need to make sure they execute their own. And again, it's Sam Monaghan they go to. And what a take that is, almost reaching over her shoulder for it was Enya Breen. Chugang, little tip on pass, like Mahan taking it on. There's a real fluency to the way Ireland are playing now. Ball all the way out to Parsons, who had to stoop for it. 
eventually gets to ground, leaves it for Riley. O'Brien, again, not the best pass, but she did well to hold on. Dorothy Wall. <laughs> Penalty Ireland, Wales not rolling away. And Riley getting on with it. Showing real ambition, ultimately, in hindsight, will that be the right call? It was certainly kickable for O'Brien. Wafer, good ball outside. Curring did really well to hold on to it. Riley to Jugang. Oh, great feed to sidestep that up. initial tackle. Jones involved again. Jugang. Ireland have lost a little bit of the attacking impetus here. O'Brien flips it back inside where Eve Higgins is there again. Did you get there? You were offside. Well, there's another Irish penalty. You get there, that's no problem. You had nine offside. From a very similar position from which Dan O'Brien kicked her second conversion, so they may have to take the three points here, make it a three-score game. Yeah, and there was some criticism in the Italy game, you know, when they had opportunities in the 22, they didn't go for posts. So it's that leadership now, you've had Del McMahon, Sam Monaghan there, but they're going with intent, they're going to the, the touchline, they're wanting that next try. Yeah. Kira! Well, that's a Kira, big call. Don't do that again. It's a bowl it's a call. Against you. But what intensity that Ireland are playing with, that speed of play, Avian Riley taking it on. But, bit, you know, Enya Breen hit the switch line. It wasn't just her running on her own. And then when Katie Corrigan got it, it was the, the speed of clearance. We've seen Evans going in trying to rob it, but actually uh, the clear out was so good. The Wales not going to the air at all. They're trying to repel this Number ball. Six, get up, get up, get up. Fall under the left arm of Neve Jones. Jones is edging closer. Need to get going forward again. They certainly are now. Neve Jones is almost there. She's down and she has the try. Ireland are demolishing Wales in this first half an hour. Neve Jones with her ninth try for Ireland, her fourth in the Six Nations Championship. And every opportunity Ireland have generated in this first half has been finished off. Yeah, nobody minds when you go for corner when you actually score a try out of it. But great set piece. Obviously, Wales not competing in the air. They go with the, the solid Sam Monaghan. Great set up. They're so tight. And this is a strong physical Welsh team. But inches just keep working. Pierce has to go back around the corner because she has changed her bind. Wales had slowed it down. But great awareness for Neve Jones to see where that try line is. She's staying nice and low and as much as here Bevan tries to stop her, she manages to get over. So Ireland will be so happy with that. You know, they're getting into these areas and they're getting the tries. Dan O'Brien makes a three from three. Ireland keeping it tight this time. And they really didn't encounter an awful lot of Welsh resistance there. And you can see Dan O'Brien included a number of the Irish players wearing black armbands this evening in memory of Daryl McCabe, who passed away recently. Daryl was the father of the Irish Sevens international, Katie Farrell McCabe. Here is Aoife Wafer. She is unstoppable. And wisely just turned down at the last possible second the potential offload. How has Sam no, Monaghan held on to that? O'Brien. A marked improvement in Ireland's handling as well today. Unfortunately, from their point of view, they're actually getting plenty of opportunities, Grace, to, to show us that because the quality of the passing isn't always what it should be. No, Sam Monaghan has hamstrings of steel to bend down that quick to, and get the ball and regather it. Parsons ensuring that Wales gain no further progress there. It'll be a Welsh scrum. And explain to us, Grace, how Sam Monaghan, in that previous passage of play, has managed to hold on to this ball. 
that's attitude it's pure attitude it's not letting it go and you can see there catches it on the second go just before it hits the line it's having no awareness of your body just going for it but what's really good is wales are putting ireland under huge pressure we see the sight the likes of karen lake shooting up out of the line closing dan o'brien down on them kicks but dan is not rushing she's stepping she's reacting to that and making really good decisions well another blow for wales they've lost their number eight beth lewis who won her 45th cap today. She's been replaced by Natalia John, equally experienced. Although, we are hearing that is not injury related. So that's a big call for Yoel Cunningham this early in the game, Grace. Yeah, it is huge because uh, Beth and Lewis is a huge option in the line out. You know, she's been used a, a, lot, a lot this Six Nations and she's also good around the rook, stealing ball. She's top. You know, one of the top ones with three steals in this Six Nations. So, um, yeah, she'll be a huge loss to them. But obviously, wanting to change things up, it's 21-0 it's down. You know, he has to do something. And Natalia John is, you know, a stalwart. She she doesn't do anything wrong, and she puts a lot of the work in. You control that. You can control the hiss as well for me, please, OK? So, Natalia John goes into that second row. So there's a little bit of a reshuffle in the Welsh back row now as well on account of that change made by the man in the middle of your picture. Well, George, Georgia Evans at eight is now a huge threat. She is going to be slowing that rook down, getting in, messing up Ireland balls, so they have to make sure they deal with that. And it'll be the Saracens number eight that just leaves it for her scrum half. Hannah Jones now... Joyce Butchers got rid of it before she was nailed by Eve Higgins. And the Ireland defence holding firm. Wales getting from right to left pretty quickly, but not making a huge amount of progress. They may start to do so now, though. Thanks, Harris Phillips put down by Linda Dugang and more than put down, forced backwards. It's a loose pass collected by Karen Lake. Penalty Ireland. They're just not allowing Wales any opportunity to gain side, some momentum. From the wrong sides and then got involved in rack. He must come all the way back round. Yeah, it's like, you know, such hits by Linda Dugang. She has the latch on, she's driving, you know, Karis Phillips back. And, you know, Wales, no matter what they're trying to do, they're just slow on the support getting caught on the wrong side but it's because of the intent of Ireland they're working hard to try and spoil that ball so they have to rush to get into that supporting position well, Brian the Church, she finds touch she was right in the middle of the field well, one measure in which Ireland really improved particularly against the French in their opening game was the number of missed tackles that was way down in last year and you can see today again Grace that's improved also yeah definitely huge hits you know, better reading, better understanding. Parsons. And she released and went again. Riley, Neve Jones. Tan O'Brien. O'Brien opts to keep hold of it. Off Ireland go again, Wafer bursting into the space. She's got Dorothy Wall with her, she may not need her. Wales have not been able to get to grips with Aoife Wafer at all in this first half. Just well, that will be just a knock-on advantage as the referee. But it did look like a genuine attempt to play the ball. The ball is available, you're pushing it in. Riley to Linda Jugai, and Wafer again. Wales are on the rack here. Ireland looking to finish okay. them off. Yeah, look, she's there and you're on top I've of that come back well. for There's that no earlier knock-on. We'll come back. You nearly had hold of that. It's just a knock-on. 
I was wondering with Aoife Wafer moving to six whether she'd get more opportunities or less opportunities on the ball, whether we see less of her, but that is definitely not the case. You know, that's, I don't know, her second line break of the, the match. She's had three so far this Six Nations, but amazing from her. Just, just keep that balance. And the unseen work of Dorothy Wall, you know, to make the line break is one thing, but then the rook needs to be secured. And we see there, Wales are straight in and Dorothy Wall just clears that out. Yeah, and uh, yeah, Hannah side. Jones, unlucky there. I think she's seen the full length of the pitch. Uh, she had to go for it, two hands were going for it. And be because of that and a, a genuine uh, chance to catch it, it's only a, a knock on, it's not a penalty. Well, it's been a, an attritional first half for Wales. Several other players receiving treatment over the course of the opening 32 or 33 minutes. And there are two oh, more down at the moment. Yeah. Well, you've been talking about Aoife Wafer. So many parts of her game Welsh have struggled with. The acceleration, her power, ability to keep the ball in hand when required, to offload it when required. Five carries, 46 metres made. Yeah, it's just unbelievable. You know, and it's her decision-making. We've seen previously there where... Um, she looked to offload it, but she knew it wasn't on, and then she keeps it. You know, there's so many times people try and throw that pass, and it doesn't come to hand, and you lose that momentum. And, you know, she knows Dorothy was there, but the clear out comes, and Ireland keep that momentum going. They maybe went slightly too wide there with Hannah Jones able to intercept, but, you know, everyone's working so hard, and you can see the work rate of this Irish team. And when you have people like Aoife Wafer, making line breaks, giving you that go-forward ball, it's a joy to play with. And if you're averaging nine yards per carry, you should be giving the ball as often as possible. That's Karen Lake, and she looks almost inconsolable. She's obviously picked up an injury that she feels is pretty serious. And Wales may be forced into another change. And yeah, it's and a right it's arm. Nice. Yeah, and it looks like Courtney Knight is going to come on here. Obviously, she's coming back after Send ACL. We've seen her play last week, two weeks ago. Bristol player. Thank you. So, Karen Lake is approaching 50 caps. She's forced off. Right, right. And in comes Courtney Kate. Right, so who played in all five games last year. Courtney Knight, she's in for the remainder of this game, you'd imagine. Goes way for again. Irrepressible in this first half. Tackle! Another strong carry for Brittany Hogan. She's been overshadowed by what Aoife Wafer's done in this opening period, but she herself has seen a lot of the ball as well, as has Sam Monaghan. On goes Eve Higgins. It's all gone backwards. A ball is here. Neve Jones. And around the corner come Ireland again through Brittany Hogan. Again, a fluency and cohesion to the Irish play that we just have not seen very often over the last three or four years. And perhaps with Ireland finally stepping into the professional arena in terms of it being full time these sorts of improvements could have been expected but they've come quicker maybe than many would have believed Adele McMahon Riley for O'Brien skips Parsons in favour of Wafer again two or three Welsh tacklers required to deal with her and she'd imagine will leave space elsewhere Linda Jugai Leave the ball, the ball is here. You use your own ball. Wait. Wall and McMahon waiting, they go to Monaghan. 
she takes it up to within five metres. Well done by Anya Breen. She's got the ball, she's lifted the ball up. Okay, you're off feet now, leave! Ireland almost there. Incredibly looking for a bonus point try before half time. Haney, great handling from her. But the Welsh defence remains resolute. Monaghan put down. Quick ball for Riley. If Ireland could get it wide, that's where the numbers are. And they have dragged this Welsh defence into a pretty congested area. Off goes Hogan once more. But Wales get a win, and it's one they desperately needed. And who else it would it be but Alex Callender? She's such a threat. She just bided her time, and that's a huge amount of phases for, for Ireland to be successful, not score the try. But you see here, she's just watching. Evans gets her down and straight in over that ball. And although she goes off her feet, she already had her hands on ball. Nikki George finds touch. And Wales will Sam, be under a lot of pressure from this line out. Just as we're going through. Yeah, it was amazing to see like Ireland go through so many phases without a mistake. You know, last two weeks ago we seen how you know they would have made handling errors and the variety of play. The only thing was maybe the speed of it. Wales were able to set. They were driving the back. They were again. slowing the ruck down quick enough. Um, but Ireland maybe need to just change that, maybe have a couple of pick and goes, but the latches worked really well. We see Brittany Hogan making ground, people getting latched onto her, yeah, driving her over. Christy Haney getting some treatment, the American-born Irish front rower. Okay, just, just step with over. the Tipperary grandmother. That's it, there you go. That's on you, yeah, yeah. Just set the girls Linda, up in here. Linda. Just over, just over a little bit. Full Ireland, seven from eight at line out time. And they've also managed to pinch a couple as well. Can they make it a third steal here? In five. It's a good Welsh mall. Ireland look at it, send them towards that sideline. Stand by Rex, leave it, leave it. Good work from Alex Callender. The clearance of George. Just see what we do for us. Yeah. Number nine, offside. Uh, even Riley, offside. If, you, if you'd run off down the wing, you'd be very upset. <laughs> yeah, Sarah Cox is very keen on the, those offside penalties. Offside. It's good to see because a lot of the times in games we don't see the ref calling that offside, you know, and teams end up creeping and creeping, but she's pinged both sides, both nines actually, uh, for that offside. George has failed to find touch this time. Here's O'Brien. Okay, Green Keep, come in, stop. stop Something stop. for Parsons to get after. Oh, brilliantly taken by Cleeky George, and then she accelerates through the gap. Tackled by Monaghan and Haney. And maybe Wales with a chance to get their opening score of the game before the halftime whistle if they can head for the corner. Yeah, and that's a, a let off for, for Ireland, you know, obviously Cleeky George making the, the error, you know, and it was a brilliant kick by, um, by Dana O'Brien, but it's just the indecision of Bavian Parsons. She either has to go and contest in the air for that ball, or she has to stay, she has to slow her feet down and, and make the tackle, and unfortunately she did neither, and now it's putting pressure on Ireland, and they've got the penalty in the Irish 22. Some defending for Ireland to do. They haven't had to spend up any time at all in their own 22. Stand by Red! Nothing, it's vital they keep Wales to zero heading into that half time dressing room. Go on, let's go, come in there. The Wales looking threatening here. Dropped by two of Palatu though. And Ireland reacting to that almost like they'd scored themselves. 
Yeah, well, that's huge for Ireland. You know, Tipple Autry, she's such a strong ball carrier. If she gets ball in hand and gets momentum, you know, she's going to get gain line. But just the, the pace here of Linda Dugang getting up, and whether it was the pressure or just the, the low pass, you know, it's a win for Ireland. They have to secure this scrum now, probably clear their lines and, and go into the half knowing they're 21-0 up. No. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. Come on, let's start saying that. Clock in the red. Oh, looking to secure right, a good okay. ball here right. and clear Time their off. lines. Come off. Okay. Well, given I'll some of the rugby they played in this first three. half, maybe they okay. might have a cut at Wales from deep okay. inside their own 22, depending right, on what sort of a in. mood they're in. Yes, Time back on. Right. Time off. Time off. Set yourselves up, please. We are not going to start messing around <laughs> now, OK? Sort it out, please. Crouch! Bind! Set! Steady! Set piece again from Ireland. O'Brien does what she needs to do. What a first half it's been. A half in which Ireland have been clinical with the ball, solid in defence, and a massive improvement in their set piece. So much for Scott Beeman to be pleased with. And they put themselves in a wonderful position to end a run of seven straight defeats in the Guinness Women's Six Nations Championship. Half time at Virgin Media Park. It's Ireland 21, Wales 0. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get a big welcome to some of the Ireland stars of the future. We're delighted to welcome the girls' teams from Rathdon, Feather, Mallow, and Clarkilty. The Monster Rugby Summer Camps will return with 24 venues throughout the province and are open to boys and girls aged from 6 to 12 years old. The camp costs 80 euros per job and each participant will receive an official summer camp pack comprising the Adidas Summer Camp t-shirt, trust in brag and mouth guard. To book your venue, you'll ask to be registered with easy payments to ensure a secure payment and all bookings must be completed online. 
Kara, stay, stay, stay.
Welcome back to Virgin Media Park in Cork City. We're in round three of the Guinness Women's Six Nations Championship. Ireland have dominated the Welsh. Three converted tries, a 21-point lead. And territorially and possession-wise, they have bossed this game almost from the opening kickoff. Wales unchanged for the second half inside of the one switch that wasn't forced upon them in the first half, with Courtney Kate having to come in for the injured Karen Lake. So the crowd that have made their way into Virgin Media Park this afternoon, and there has been a great number that have come through the turnstiles, mostly supporting Ireland, very pleased by what they've seen so far. And here come Ireland again, looking for their first win in this year's championship, looking for their first win in eight Six Nations Championship games. And they are very well placed to get themselves up and running. 
So it'll be more of the same, I suspect, would have been, would have been the halftime message from Scott Beeman. From a Wales point of view, and Johan Cunningham, they need to do an awful lot better in most aspects of the game. So away we go. What will the message have been, Grace, in your opinion, from Scott Weber at half-time in that dressing room? Keep doing what you're doing. You know Ireland are playing in the right areas of the pitch. They have the territory, they have the possession. Don't give the Welsh team Take this ball. You know, make sure we keep, keep possession of it and uh, starve them of that uh, opportunity. Parsons did well initially, found Lauren Delaney over on that far side. Somehow they've managed to avoid going into touch there. Here is Monaghan, one of the standout players in the first half, of which there were many, including Christy Haney, who's carried with such purpose. Riley, nice delay on that pass, where it was taken on by Adele McMahon. His return to the team today has been a, a very positive one. There's a delayed reaction from the referee, Sorry, I didn't for which he apologises. Jenny Heskett did Just call for the mark. <laughs> mark. But she hasn't found touch, that's a terrible kick. Fielded by Riley, now O'Brien. Comes back against the grain. And there's more space out the other side. Back for George, oh, blocked down brilliantly! Great work from Corrigan, and she might finish it off herself! Katie Corrigan for Ireland! The teenager with her first international try, all her own work. Well, that's wonderful play. And Ireland have the bonus point in the bank. It's her second try in green, in fact. And she can be very proud of the manner of grace in which she made it for herself, and then still had plenty to do afterwards. Yeah, like Jenny Hesketh, great taking the mark, but you could see the wind there having the effect, the ball hanging in the air. And that's the decision making of Dan O'Brien kicking it. Yes, there was more space left and uh, Wales managed to deal with it. But the effort and the, like, the effort to get up in that line from Katie Corrigan to get the charge down. And you can just see this Irish team today. They have a real intense set. You know, they're really working hard off the ball, not only when they have it, and to get the charge down and to know where the ball landed and to actually have that pace to score. So that's an amazing start to the second half. Well, whatever measure of intent that Wales would have entered this second half with has evaporated in two and a half quick second half minutes. Katie Corrigan showing poise and acceleration into that space. And I don't think that kickoff has gone 10 either. It's all going wrong from a Welsh point of view. Yeah, and we didn't notice it in the first half. Dan O'Brien has such a big boot on her. You know, that wind, it's hanging in the air but Wales just not so dealing with it. Year, and, yeah. you know, Wales starting to get deflated now. It's really hard to keep that momentum there's, going. There's they've just given away a four try. Okay. And not only that, but they've had to make a huge amount of tackles. 155 to 53 oh, in that first on, half. That'll Tom start off. be tiring, especially if Ireland keep this uh, momentum and Sorry, tempo on, up. <laughs> there we go. All right, time back on. Let's start building then, ladies. And well, to be asking themselves, where do they go from here? Really, you can just stand there. You can stand there. They showed in the see. face of fierce English dominance Crouch. on the scoreboard as well in round two that they don't throw the towel in. They continue to play. They made a couple of opportunities for themselves and they never gave up defensively. But they are in quite a hole here in Cork. O'Brien trying to judge this one. Trying to keep it away from Heskett. And Parsons got there quickly. Back it goes to George. And she finds touch. You can see there Ireland doing exactly the same as what they did in the first half. Great attacking option off that scrum. You have options both sides, but they're pinning Wales back into their own 22. 
you know, seeing do they force a mistake, great uh, Ireland chase, but Heskett dealt with it well, secured it, and then really good clearance uh, by Clicky George. Just stay there, stay there, that's it. Here you come. Taken at the tail of that liner by Karis Phillips. Good. Yes, it's been an error ridden performance from Wales, Grace, but it's the pressure being put upon them by Ireland that has led to the vast majority of those mistakes. Yeah, especially you see that set piece. When you're ha constantly having to go backwards, the kick's put in behind you, you're having to run back, reset your defensive line or your attacking line, and then get back up and, and you know, hit and make tackles. It sucks the energy out of you. Your legs feel fatigued. It's a 3G pitch. It's quite fast. It's a dry day, you know, and especially Trump. when you're having to tackle all the time. Point! Set! Stand up! Penalty Ireland. Riley wanted to go quickly. And I think Ireland will be pretty pleased the referees called them back there. What was the call already? Red did what? Welsh front row penalised again. You drop your knee to the floor. To a Pilotu singled out by the referee. Stay up. Dropping her knee in that scrum. To the end. Need Ireland now to change it up. Probably one of their weaknesses today in this uh, game is their line out. You know, you want to be able to secure that possession. You can see why Avian Riley was wanting to go quick. So hopefully we see the likes of Sam Monaghan securing it here today. And it is taken off the top of Monaghan. Wafer opts to play it inside this time. Big carry from Dorothy Waller, I think is about to be substituted. Here come Ireland again. Another carry for Adele McMahon. Sam Monaghan now. Ireland are going to make a change in their second row. Ireland playing with a penalty advantage now as well as Parsons attacks the line. Go, 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 go. Well, it's managed to steal it, so back they'll come for the penalty. One there, because she's crawling into the path of the nine. Oh, well, there's an offside here. So it's either there or unseen. So she's crawled into the path of the nine, so she can't get there. Okay, or oh, there's an offside in between here, so that's, you go back. Three and four, just in the middle here, or just down here. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna just keep the scoreboard ticking over, and pointing to the posts. Yeah, and it's smart. You know, they have their bonus point, and um, they have their four tries, and it was this decision making that we wanted two weeks ago, and. Um, Really good, two options of penalties. If you want to go for the line out, then you have the edge one, but there's one right in front of the post. She has the wind, why not go for it? And Wales now just need to settle themselves, get a bit of composure here, take a bit of time, because they do not want to start seeing these penalties creep up and give Ireland an easy opportunity to get into their half. She's been error-free today, Dan O'Brien, not only from the kicking team, but with her line kicking as well. She's five from five now. And Ireland stretch further clear. It's an awfully long way back for Wales now. And it is Fiona Tweet coming in and Sam Monaghan coming off. She's only played 48 minutes, Chris. But what a performance it's been. Yeah, unbelievable from her. You know, 14 carries. She's get, got over the gain line. She's brought Ireland forward. She's been huge in the line out. She is their go-to there. And I thought Wales would have marked her better knowing that she is, but she's had a huge game. Inside. Well, we can only assume that she's just been minded now for the last couple of rounds of the championship because it's been a fearsome display from her. So it's not injury related, but she's getting the rest the of the afternoon off. In the end. And she's put Ireland into what you would believe to be an almost unassailable lead, yeah, but yeah, stranger things have happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And as you yeah, say, so Grace, it'll force back. Ireland now to look elsewhere at, at line-out time. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's tidying up. Do you start shorting it, you know, go to five-man? You know, they have managed to gain the last couple. Um, but it's that variety and, and making sure to throw. I'm not sure whether the wind is having an effect, but it seems to be consistently in, in this Six Nations where it hasn't been 100% successful. You know, the percentage is quite down. Um, we see Dan O'Brien getting treatment there. She cleared that kick. I think she was That's under a bit of pressure. Yeah. Ben. Yep. Okay. Okay. It is a late hit. I'm buying 19 red over there. So okay. Tell you don't so you can either Dan have is being penalised <laughs> or where it is here, where the ball is a little lighted. You stay here. Yeah, and it'll be on the 15. Okay. So it will be a penalty against you for a late hit. Okay. Yeah, and that's, as I said, Wales have to be careful with the penalties, and that's needless from Nalia John. Just coming in, Dan O'Brien has the ball away. She gets the hit on her. Dan makes sure she stays down. And, and really good leadership there from Miguel McMahon, talking to the referee, Sarah Cox, and, and saying to her, you know, I believe there's been a late hit. Can you check on it? And, you know, that's just really good leadership. Sian Jones will be in half-back shortly for Wales. Well, just not allowing Wales a toehold yeah, even in this does. game. They're continuing to keep the foot down. This is the, the reason for the bit. penalty. The Natalia John step arriving over. a bit a day or two late. No, I put them on the line. Nothing so overly over. malicious in it though. There they are. Yeah, perfect. Well, Ireland never got into the air at all. First line out in the post Sam Monaghan minutes. Hasn't gone according to plan. Take him back. Back for Cleeky George. Good kick from her. Down to her opposite number, fielded by O'Brien. Inside it goes, or it will be taken up by Delaney. It's a good tackle, clinging to her was Alex Callender. Riley for O'Brien, and now Wafer and Dorothy Wall. Going back inside is the fullback, Lauren Delaney. Here's O'Brien. First touch since coming in for Tweet. Neve Jones, got beyond the first tackle. Very difficult to put down Neve Jones. But Ireland not getting there quickly enough. And it's a really good piece of work from Georgia Evans. Yeah, that's typical Georgia Evans, just getting straight in over the ball. Great carry by Neve, but just gets slightly isolated from her support players. They have to manage to keep up with her. Um, Arlene, you can see what they were doing off that kickoff, spreading the wall, ball wide. The space is open on the left hand side. Cleaky George couldn't find touch, but no one really attacked that ball in a green shirt. Leave it green, leave it. I've got nothing there, Menace. She's falling and she's pretty much on the floor when she gets tackled. That's Gwen Pierce, who hasn't carried the ball as often as we normally would see her doing games. And Little offload inside, <laughs> taken up by Kira Bevan. But that ball was passed forward. And I, I would have hated to see Cleeky George actually get this pass there earlier because she took an absolute huge hit by Neve Jones. So great deception for them, but you can see what Butchers are trying to do. Bevan on her shoulder, but just the ball going forward out of her hand. So Saya Jones, who Started against England, getting plenty of play, uh, game time with the Premiership this season. Still in her teens, comes in for the vastly experienced Kira Bevan. And a change in hooker for Ireland, and it's significant not only an ovation for the brilliant performance put in by Neve Jones, but the arrival back under the international arena of Cleena Maloney, who has not played for Ireland since November 2021, coming in for her 32nd cap, the Exeter Chiefs hooker. Yeah, that's a huge moment for her. Absolutely huge, you know, I'm sure she thought her days were done in a, in a green jersey and she wears it with such pride and what we need now is for her to not get too hyped up about it, you know, come on, do what she normally does. We've watched her tear up the English Premiership with Exeter. 
and she just needs to play her own game, not put too much pressure on herself. You know, we know what skills she can bring. She's been brought into that squad because of injuries, and uh, she loves scrummage time. She put, does a lot of the hard work around the pitch, clearing out rocks and, and big carries, so it'll be interesting to see how she gets on. The change in the middle of the Welsh front row as well. Karis Phillips withdrawn, replaced by Molly Reardon, who's 11 years her junior. Okay. Just her second cap made her international debut against England in Bristol a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, she was called in for the, the injured Kelsey Jones, who had the calf strain that last England game. So, big game for her again, second cap, you know, big scrum, and she has a bit of freedom now to, to try and put her mark on it. Riley looking to go down that short side. O'Brien kept the pass until the tackle was made. Oh, this is brilliant again from Ireland. Run with such a good effect today, Katie Corrigan. Yeah, again, Ireland just not resourcing that rock well enough. It's slow ball. Wafer, who has passed it a little more in the second half, carried mostly in the first half. Christy Haney reaching for it. Riley. Dorothy Wall back to O'Brien, considered a little chip over the top, wisely keeping it in hand. Off goes Maven Parsons. Parsons makes good inroads into the 22. Wall somehow managed to flip it into the path of the onrushing Fiona Tweet. The nine's not here. Dan O'Brien, Christy Haney. O'Brien, through the hands they go, Wafer takes it upon herself this time. Riley, Fiona Tweet says, Gio Gang and Dorothy Wall for company. O'Brien gathers it at the second time of asking, and a first touch since coming in for Cleena Maloney. And off go Ireland again, Avian Riley. She's been so busy around the fringes today. Eve Higgins, who's already got on the score sheet today. Riley, Maloney, and O'Brien. It's through the hands of Wafer. I'm trying to tidy things up for Ireland as Enya Breen. Ball's out. She got from alongside position. Ball was out. Ball. Wales have it. And almost getting away. But Jasmine nice. Joyce will be called back. Still in. It was not Still out. In. On second viewing in the eyes of the referee and her assistant, so that will be an Ireland penalty. Time off. Yeah, they were low on resource there. You see Bavin Parsons nice. just kind of half coming in at an angle, which probably she wasn't pinged there, but Hannah Jones, she thought that ball was out past the foot, but touch judge able to call it and see it. And a change in halfback, Molly Scuffle McCabe coming Come in. On. Evan Riley's had a really good game at scrum half. And Aoife Dalton also on. Just on the end. Yeah, and there's no let up for Wales. You know, Scuffle McCabe brings a great intensity and speed to that ball as well. So she'll bring have another impact. And Aoife Dalton's so good at carrying that ball to the line, getting over the gain line, especially in a bit more spaces. So it'll be interesting to see her get involved. And Aoife Dalton involved already, to the point of almost getting over that try line. Dorothy Wall, Scuffle McCain, beyond McMahon, and off the shoulder of O'Brien. Can they get it out wide? They can, but it's spilled by Corrigan with the try line at her mercy. More turnover ball for Wales. Wales have now made over 200 tackles. Their Use bodies the are going to be very sore this time tomorrow. Simmer down, simmer down. Fiona, kicker, kicker, Fiona. Take him back. 16, stop. Fielded by Corrigan. 
Not a good tackle. It's Corrigan no, down. No, no, Roxford. Haney. She's taken so many of those passes above her head today and not dropped any of them. Little gentle dink in behind by O'Brien. Nicely done. Yeah, and that's the game management you want. Wales trying to get out at her own half. Dan O'Brien, you know, there's Wales so strong in defence, putting huge pressure. We see the likes of Butchers, Alex Callender hitting Ireland back, but then to have the ball dinked over your head and, and suddenly you have a line out in your own five metre channel. I would have Katie Corgan did really well taking that ball, but she has huge pace and I just think she could accelerate a lot more, use her feet a lot more going into that contact. I think she's too readable at the minute going into that contact and making it difficult for the clear out. Well, there's a nice moment there for one of the Ireland debutants in this year's championship. Shannon for has come in for her international debut. Born in Auckland, plays her club rugby in the Premiership in England with Ealing Trailfinders. She's come through the IQ system. So she's on the field for the last quarter. Vicky George with another really good clearance. Parsons did well. Taking it over her shoulder. Good handling from Wall again. And O'Brien. And out it goes towards Aoife Dalton. I've got that around chest, life. And the tackle was legitimate, says the referee. Inside it goes to Tweet. He's been heavily involved since coming in. It's got for McCabe for O'Brien and now Jugang. On she goes. O'Brien. Up to the deeper pass. Bevan Parsons. It's good defending again from Wales. Hannah Jones involved, as was Jasmine Joyce, and they've won the penalty. And as they did against England, with the game gone in terms of the contest and the result, Wales continue to tackle, they continue to scrap, and it does say a lot for their character in really difficult circumstances. Yeah, they're in their own 22, and you see uh, Tipolato, just a huge carry there, you know, getting over gain line. They've defended for so much of this game. You see tackles 208 to Ireland 73. But when they have the ball in hand, they're wanting to hit that gain line. And then obviously Bavian Parsons gets to the edge there. But actually, it's Jasmine Joyce. What a huge tackle. She makes the tackle, but she doesn't stop. She leg drives, she keeps driving forward. And that gives her time, her team time, momentum. And you know, she gets the turnover and, and gets the penalty. So they do not give up. Donna Rose into the front row for Wales. Got a couple of tries off the bench against Ireland two years ago. And Abby Constable also in. Yeah, and you were speaking there, Dave, of uh, Shannon Igahifor. Um, what a class player, you know, playing in Auckland. She was under Anna Richards, you know, one of the most amazing players in, in women's rugby, four-time world champion uh, with the Black Ferns. So what a person to coach coach you and then you know working with Ealing Trailfinders now Giselle Maher who's an amazing coach <laughs> with them you know and Sh Shannon has a huge IQ rugby <laughs> you know very smart player works really hard and has trained really well the last couple of weeks she's disappointed not get selected and then has worked really really hard to to, to like get her place on our on our, fir our first game today as you can see the top five tacklers in the game are all Welsh the most any Irish player has made today is 10. Which says something about the level of dominance that has been enjoyed by Ireland with the ball. You don't have to go too far back in the record books to find the last time Wales were nilled against Ireland just three years ago at the Cardiff Farm Park when they lost 45-0 in the shadow of the Principality Stadium, but there were few anticipating that might be how things would pan out this afternoon. Although, still a quarter of this game to go. Plenty of time for Wales to get that scoreboard ticking in their favour. Here's Dan O'Brien. Wall. Oh, good work. Quick thinking from her. Finds Eva Wafer and another tackler beaten. And off goes David Parsons. Parsons going for the corner! Oh, that's brilliant rugby from Ireland. David Parsons with her first try in this year's championship. 
And when she has a little bit of space, she puts the gas and the burner's on and off she goes. Well, she obviously put that last tackle by Jasmine Joyce in the back of her mind there when she got that opportunity. She was taking it, but what brilliant play by Ireland here. Dan O'Brien getting that pass away. Second pass out of contact. Aoife Wafer running so straight, beats a defender, draws in the last defender. And Bavin Parsons still has works to do, but Heskes has no match for her. And what an amazing finish. And, and look at this, just footwork. She goes in, out, huge handoff. And she'll be delighted to, to get her score and off to a, a good start in this Six Nations. She's an incredible athlete, Bevan Parsons, as we've seen in the Sevens Arena for so long now. One of the really clinical finishers on the Sevens circuit. And she's got one in the 15s game here today. And we've seen so much pace and power from Aoife Wafer today, but there was the subtlety that she displayed there to get that little offload into the side. Yeah, and, and you know, she could give that two seconds earlier and there'd be two players on Bavian Parsons, which is what we saw against Italy two weeks ago. But she took it on, she used her feet, she beat the first defender, and as soon as she drew the second one in, then she let the ball go, as you say, nice soft hands into Bavian Parsons. And that's, that's the crucial thing. They're the finishers, they're the things that get you over the line to, to win matches. First miss off the tee from Dan O'Brien, but I don't think that can be held against her. So that was an incredibly difficult kick. Well, it's about to make another change. Gwen Hopkins coming in for her international debut in a moment. Yeah, she's over your side, mate. She's with the yellow boots here. Before. And also coming is Kaylee Powell from the Bristol Bears. Hopkins, who was part of the other 20 set up just last year. So she's on to win her first cap. So that's all eight Welsh replacements on the field. Advantage. And yeah, fortunate to receive the kickoff and retain possession. Advantage, here by O'Brien. Stop, stop, stop. He's been forced to kick from her own half pretty much for the first time in this second period. The tackle by Ireland and gathered by Haney. Neck roll. Well, there was a neck roll and a, a tackle roll. there, so that will be a Welsh penalty. You're going to have to give me a mark, mate, because I don't know where. Yeah, unfortunately, Cleena Maloney there right, trying to clear the, the Welsh yeah, cool. Thanks, mate. defenders out, slowing Ireland ball down, and the only way she could Slam do it neck. was by neck rolling. You sure? Yeah, it's gone. Wales calling a scrum right in the middle of the field. That's an interesting one. It's just a little bit high. And what's probably to do with the wind and that the last time Cleeky George yep. tried to find touch in the middle of the oh, field, it almost came back over her head. Yeah, and I have a feeling, you know, they haven't had the ball in their hand that much, especially as a unit in the back. So, you know, it's a good platform. They have a strong scrum. It's an opportunity now to get over gain line. And, you know, you would hope when the Welsh forwards pop their head up that, Trout. you know, the backs are al already over that gain line. Bites. And I'm about to bring in the Ulster pair of Nevo Dead and Saif McGrath to their front row. Solid well set piece, a kick over the top by Jones. And that's a very good kick indeed from the teenager. Yeah, Linda Jung Gang down Some after off. that scrum, taking Just some treatment. So McGrath no doubt in. I think Linda Jung Gang and Christy Haney, both of whom have no delivered powerful performances, yeah, but particularly you. Haney with her carrying and her handling of some really awkward passes. Yeah, and she yeah, keeps yeah, the yeah. ball in two hands most of the time, and, you know, she keeps them options open, and defenders have to sit off her slightly because of that, and, and then she can get an extra metre sometimes, and huge defensive uh, work rate from her as well. So, 
And this is the good thing, you know, with, with Ireland, when they're 36 nil up, you've more opportunities to, to get players on the pitch like Nevo Dead and Sive McGrath. We haven't seen much of them this tournament. And they get to get more game time, more experience under the belt, and that's what you need to see. So only Nicole Fowley is that your number one that you're looking for there, has Tim? been left on the bench for the moment. Just yes or no, please, Tim. Well, that's not a great is sight now, it is it, is it Linda Dugan? Yeah, so yes, important yeah. to this okay, you've got the Ireland side there, yeah. and that makeshift yeah, sling yeah, okay. around that right arm. And let's hope that isn't as serious as it might look right now. Yeah. You come, come on. There's a lovely piece in one of the national newspapers here in Ireland during the week about Linda and her relationship she has with her mother. So she's left the field. Hopefully from an Irish point of view, she'll be back in a couple of weeks for the final two rounds. Wells in attack, continuing to struggle. Yeah, and that's a real let off for Ireland again. You know, the overthrow happens. It was sitting on a plate for Wales and then they just knock on at the tail, but line out still, a, still an issue Trout. for Ireland. Overthrow there and you just, if she had it gathered that, that was a clear try. So. Wafer. It's got from McCabe for O'Brien. And again, her line kicking has been right out of the top drawer today. You know, from being on your five meter Just under pressure at the line out to suddenly being, you know, 10 meters from the halfway. And what a carry from Aoife Wafer from that scrum. You know, go forward ball. Wales have no opportunity to to get in okay, at the rock and then a, a clear ball over. for Dana Ireland, to, to clear her lines. Just take the end of the line for me? Just come in a little bit. You're, just, you're setting yourselves a little bit too far away. That's it. That's another steal in the line out for Ireland. It's the fourth one they've pinched, pinched from the Welsh today. They haven't been able to hold on to it for too long. It's a good carry from Georgia Evans. Wells playing with an advantage here of a knock on. Carried by Abby Constable. Okay, all done, Ireland. All done, all done. And that's Gwen Hopkins. Knock-on advantage is over. Little ball flipped back inside brilliantly by Kayleigh Powell. And an opportunity for Wales finally to score. Karis Cox just about put down. Stepping back inside is Gwen Hopkins. The referee hasn't made a decision as yet. Held up is the call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Time's off. Menas. Okay. I'm yeah. going to come up to you, mate. So, my initial on-field reaction is that that was held up. I don't have a clear grounding, OK, and I see someone underneath it. But can you just check that I haven't been unsighted and it has gone down at some point? Yeah, so on-field, so no try. We're looking at no grounding. Try. Correct, yeah. Right, OK. So, Andrew McMenemy from Scotland called upon. Just, you just see, see Dan O'Brien come in here. So... Oh, definitely touched the ground. Yeah, let, let him do that. Yeah. And this is the, the communication now is it's no try on field decision, so we have to see the ball on the ground touching the line for it definitely to go ahead. This is the better angle of the two. And Dan O'Brien certainly got her knee under the ball subsequent to the initial carry over the line. Again, is there enough evidence to overturn it? What an attempt it is from Dan O'Brien to save this try. Yeah, and it's just the touch of the ball, whether the belly of the ball here goes, you can see Dan O'Brien's knee is there. Does it touch? You can't see it on that camera angle. You can't see it down. 
tip of it there, we maybe. We can't clearly see that from here, okay? Let him do his job. Okay, Has Coxie. Yes, mate, yeah. I have a decision for you. Yeah, go for it. The ball is grounded on the line, so you yep. can reverse your own field decision okay. and award the try. And she gets underneath after that action. Correct, the ball is grounded. So the try is yeah, going to be awarded here. Be. Wales are up and running. It is a try. It is a try. So Gwen Hopkins, yep. on her debut, has got her first international try. Yeah, and it was this break up the middle of the pitch. Great running from Cox. That's right. Managed to be tackled down, but direct ball. And there was definitely enough Irish players there to, to come up off the line, but getting caught out wide, having to step back in. We see Suffolk McCabe just getting caught on the inside, and Dan O'Brien did her utmost. Minutes, well so Kelly Powell with the conversion. Yeah, as I come round, she just gets underneath up on that bounce. She won't want to see that so one again. The bit. Thank you, mate. Well done. Yeah, no brother. Time for the line of number 20, Gwendolyn Hopkins. So some measure of solace for the Smattering of Welsh fans around Virgin Media Park and indeed their head coach, Sean Cunningham. Time on, team. But it's a small consolation on an afternoon in which they've been dominated. Nicole Fowley has come in for Ireland and it's Adele McMahon being withdrawn. So captaining Ireland on the field now is Eve Higgins. Playing a lot of rugby close to home here. Oh, they won't want to be beaten again close to their own try line. Looking to play the rest of this game out in this part of the field. Cleared by Cyan Jones. Nicely done by Delaney to find Parsons. Wafer. Back for O'Brien. Here is Dalton, and it goes towards Dan O'Brien. Helped on by Fowley. I've got that backwards, unless anyone's got anything different. Yeah, cool. Ireland have numbers here, Dorothy Wall. Wants to keep it herself. No, leave it now. No, no. Fowley, taken up by Nevo Dowd. There. Scuffle McCabe. Well, they've gone away from that kicking game in the second half. Such has been their dominance with the ball in hand. And it's a, a poorly executed kick from Scuffle McCabe. So confirmation of that change. Fowley is in, which means that Aoife Dalton is actually going to spend the rest of this game in the pack. Yeah, and sometimes that's you get as many people on the pitch as you want, you, you can, you know, sub-wise, you're, you're winning the game, and then <laughs> next thing you get an injury late on, and, you know, ten minutes left here with a, a centre in a flank. There's Dalton who made that that's tackle there. And chest for me as well, man. Well, it's enjoying the rest spell of possession they've had in the game. And it's too little too late from their point of view. Georgia Evans still going strong, however. Okay, tackle now! Breaking through the space again is Hopkins. She's done a lot of damage since coming in for her debut. And they have numbers, Wales. They 
Really good tackle from Parsons. Just disrupted that attack and coming up with a ferocious hit was Eve Higgins. It's come forward off an Irish hand, however. Wales down that right hand side, little offload inside towards Jasmine Joyce. It is Irish ball. Okay, come on, back for that scrum. Yeah, and this is not the way Ireland would want to finish out the game. You know, they've had such strong spells. They've played really, really, really well. But, you know, this is what we can't have happening. Missed tackles, stepping back inside McGrath, just getting caught out. Time's up. Energy! No, leave it. OK. Scrappy period of the game. Ten minutes remaining. Ireland are finally going to be up and running. It's a really difficult 2023. A lot has changed Boys! off the pitch from Irish women's rugby point of view, particularly in the 15s game. The seven okay. squad continued to go from strength to strength. We're both not so great with the space there. And they okay. finally almost belatedly yes, took the step into the full time or in a grace. And we wondered how long it would take well. before we would way. start to see the benefits of that begin to seep through onto the field and into results. And, and not many would have seen this coming today. No, definitely not. And and even the changes, you know, when players are, are getting dropped, the likes of Adele McMahon after first game and, and she's losing Crouch. her spot, you know, you have to work harder. So that competition uh, drives standards. You know, next thing you come to train and the next day and, and you're having to put in more effort. And, you know, you can recover better. You can spend more time analysis together. You can get your skills up that you need to work on. So the huge, no, huge improvement because of professionalism. In. You're not getting a cheap penalty. Stay there, stay there. Yeah, well done. Another magnificent strike from Dan O'Brien. Okay? What a John weapon that is now, that left foot of hers. And we're not rolling, okay? no, no, yeah, that. and she just looks so much more confident than she did against Italy. She's, you know, yeah, staying you're, with you're, her decisions. She's right, clearing it really well. And, and just, no, no. it's a great get out of jail that. for it's Ireland. Useful. You know, they gain position up the pitch and they can put pressure on Wales now, get up off the line. Yeah. Running of the back line has been excellent as well today. That was a poor line act from Wales, and here come Ireland again through Aoife Wafer. It looks as fresh now as she did at the start of this game. Wall. <laughs> if you consider the amount of ball that Ireland have enjoyed, Grace, the amount of passes they've, been ha they've had to make and had the opportunity to make, just seven handling hours, which is the same number as Wales, Given some of the mistakes they made against Italy in particular, Scott Beeman will be hugely pleased by that improvement. Yeah, it's been really good, and some of those handling errors have been, have been in contact or, yeah. or yeah, close yeah. to it or, or due to the pressure of, of the Welsh. But, yeah, we've seen, like, their intent, like Sam Monaghan catching balls at our laces, you know, Dan O'Brien not getting the best balls sometimes, uh, Christy Haney catching it overhead, but they oh, are catching the balls, they're really, really it, looking after it. There, and that just floor. doesn't right. give the opposition yeah, easy okay, possession. Yeah, no just you over a little bit as well. And she's back on her feet, Aoife away for her. I think a thumbs up has been given back towards the sideline, so perhaps she will be able to stay on. Well, Ireland in a fabulous position here, Grace, and it's on the back of some excellent performances, but overall, who stood out for you? Uh, for me, you know, there's been some key players. We've seen the likes of Adele McMahon stepping yes. back up in that line. It was crucial stealing that line out for one of the, the Irish tries. We've seen the likes of Dorothy Wall clearing out rocks, doing the tireless work Hang that on. some people mightn't see. But my, we're and, and we've sure seen the likes of Alex Calendar, 28 tackles, what? trying to keep Ireland out. Okay, and no and uh, Guys, Robin Ball. But for me, the player so of the match uh, today okay, has to be Aoife Wafer. 
That player with the red scrum cap, we've seen it so often. You know, she's huge amount of metres made, 132 metres today. She's 14 carries, but it was what she did with those carries. We've seen her off the back of the scrum getting go forward ball. We've seen an amazing try powering over the line when she'd no right to do so. And then we saw the beautiful, beautiful finesse of her hands to put Bavian Parsons away. So, uh, you know, she stood out last week, but she's definitely stepped it up again this week. Erica Wales looking for a second score in this game. Ireland are going to finish this match with 14 players. That was a mistake by Fowley, and that led to Ireland being offside. So penalty for Wales, and they're running it quickly. No, hands away, just leave it. No, leave it. It will be a Welsh scrum. Just a knock on. No, hands on the floor first. Yeah, that's why I called you off. Yeah, Ireland just need to be it's careful, off. keep their shape now. Defensively, they won't want to let Wales back in. Wales are so step. strong. We see Donna Rose being really other, physical here, getting involved, the, the big carries, I've not letting playing, Ireland settle. So we need. Uh, I've got it as a rugby incident live, okay? It's just unfortunate that two of them have banged heads just at the wrong time. They well, bang into right each from other, the off, Wales didn't really come up with an answer on yeah, how to deal with Aoife Wafer. Right, ready? And the capacity for her to grow and improve oh, as an international <laughs> is huge, <laughs> given she's just 21 years of age and she's yeah, still yeah. finding her feet at this level. Yeah, and she's such a workhorse. You know, she was involved in the, the Celtic Cup and with the Wolfhounds and she carried some injuries and she was dying to get back involved in playing and, you know, she came back into this Irish team and you forget how young she is because of how powerful and strong and, you know, she's got a very rugby brain and, and the physicality and power and, and the decision-making to go with it. No, wait there. Anna Jones, Jasmine Joyce had, had too many opportunities today. Well taken out wide by Courtney Cates. Tackle! There's Hopkins. Natalia John involved. Well, Parsons took a chance there. And she'll have ground to make up here, which she does. Oh, what a ball back inside that is. That's delightful. And Wales go over again. And they're finishing with a flourish here. The finish was from Karis Cock. That was simple enough no, in its execution, there, but there. the offload inside in the build-up was delicious. Really well worked from Wales. Yeah, just great composure from them. You know, they have the experience. Yeah. But it's just here. We don't mean pop out the back door, back inside, and for Cox to catch that. But it was great momentum, okay, and it looked like Wales were going to go route one. I'm just going to check that offload. Hey, Coxie. Yep. I'm going to show you a forward so pass Kate. by Red yep. in the play immediately prior to the try being scored. Yep, go for it. Forward. That's what he's it would be a shame if it was ruled out. Such was the quality of this pass. This pass here. Yeah, it does look forward. Clearly she's in front. The ball leaves the hands forward out the back there, doesn't it? Well, the it? audacity of it and the ambition no. shown, you can't no, take forward. away from that. Ultimately, it's the try won't pass, count. Go on, come running up to No, me but it was the best of back, uh, attack and play we've seen Wales do in these last 10 minutes. Uh, it's the forward pass. You know, they've been moving no, wide no, off the, the, up, the scrum, sure where... get the backs involved, we but we've seen there, route one, big carries, carrying forward, but then next thing, they're, they're using the second line of attack, and they caught Ireland off there, but two touch I just had a forward pass. Yeah, cool. Clean Maloney. Slow to get back to her feet, but looks like she'll be able to continue. <laughs> I'm going to say, yeah, I'm just, I'm going to say it's about here. Yeah. Yeah, so forward pass. It's definitely taking its toll on both these teams. You know, the physicality, they're so well matched. 
and obviously oh, Ireland had come out on top, which, you know, it was right, the opposite on, last year. Sorry, but it's always such a Four physical game. Big right, hits, big right. tackles, Four getting backs. smashed at, back by the likes of Butchers and Callender. And then you've seen Linda Jugang, you know, big carries as well and, and big tackles. And I'm sure both teams will be sore and it's about the recovery now. And that's a huge part of the professional game too, where they don't have to go to work tomorrow. They can rest up, you know, see physios, get the recovery Crouch. needed. Got to be a little bit better at holding that one. Okay, you guys have got to hold your weight. You guys have got to take the hits as well for me, please. Okay. Well, they're going to avoid losing three in a row to the Welsh. They had one nine and twelve overall. <laughs> Never before have they lost four consecutive Crouch. home games in this championship. That's another thing they'll avoid today with this Bye. result and this performance. And overall, an injection of some real hope and positivity into the new coaching ticket and his players. Their players, rather, as it's cleared by O'Brien. Again, finds touch, as she has done throughout. And even at the age of 20, she's starting to look like a genuine, experienced, composed leader in this Ireland, back line and a, a test please. level 10. On the end. Yeah, she has the skill the set, end. she has the boot, and it's just about keeping building up those experiences, the pictures on, you see, them. your decision making, okay. you know, your game management, and you can see so that's coming with every game. Okay. Right, whoa, 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 whoa. Person's gone. Okay, let's get numbers in quicker, please. We don't start penalizing that. We don't start penalizing you guys not having the right numbers and closing the gap, all right? Stay on your mark. Wales go to the front. Put it on the straight. outside. It's very clearly on the outside. Disappointment from Wally Reardon. Yeah, it's not going to get any easier for Wales. Obviously, you know, facing France now next week, their next game. That's going to be a huge battle for them. France haven't been playing the the best rugby that we have seen them play, but you know, they'd be huge game tomorrow against Italy to see where they're at and um, so Wales will have to pick themselves up and, and, and go again. Binds. Set, steady, steady. Hold your way. To the, the final hit, minute. One of the airs for led of the balloon in terms of this game as a contest a long time ago, really. That try from Katie Corrigan, 90 seconds into the second half, which put Ireland 28 0 up. And it finally broke the Welsh resistance. Bind. Games against the Scots and the English still to Set, come. Steady. That visit to Twickenham will be an interesting one. That's a game we'll see Here's live in Virgin ball. Media Stay Television at home in Ireland. Here we are again with the first touch really since coming in for the debutant. And Shannon Ikehi for hasn't seen as much of the ball as she would have liked. This will be the final play of this game. We'll have to go back to the drawing board. Three consecutive defeats. Crouch! Bind! Set! Sarah Jones inside, it goes to Powell. Now Hannah Jones out to Jasmine Joyce Butchers. for Jones again. Maybe one final fling for Wales, taken up by Natalia John. Powell 
Joyce involved once more. And if she finds space, it's usually deadly for the opposition. Eventually is put down, released and regathered. And almost over the line was Alicia Joyce Butchers. Wales playing with a penalty advantage here. That's short. Had that short. Didn't get there. Well, they never stop playing Wales. No. It's certainly something Yoan Cunningham has instilled in this group of players. Oh. Yeah, on the line. Donna yeah. Rose getting ready to take this on herself. Just pops it inside. And Ireland have stripped it. If we can just get through a phase or two, that should be the end of it. Wait, wait. Out it goes from Scuffle McCabe, and there's the full time whistle. Ireland back to winning ways in the Guinness Six Nations Championship. A first win under the new head coach, Scott Beeman. And for Wales, continued disappointment. Their championship goes from bad to worse. They gave Ireland an in, and Ireland took full advantage of it, Grace, and never let up. No, and, and that's what you want to see. You know, this Irish team are growing. I don't think this is the team that we saw two weeks ago. This is another level up, and they, and they kept going, and they've got the win. So the celebrations have started. They have two weeks to get over this, Ireland, but they can be very pleased with their evening's work. Full time at Virgin Media Park. It's finished Ireland 36. Wales five. Well, it's elation, it's ecstasy for Ireland. They've waited a long time, Grace, for this. You know what it's like to come through a, a sticky patch with your team, and, and the green jersey starts to weigh heavily on you, particularly when there's so much talk around the women's 15s game. Well, today they show that when they get it right, they could do some very positive things. Yeah, exactly. You know, the, the usual win team was Italy. You know, they didn't have that two weeks ago. But to actually get a win against a very strong Welsh team, you know, is huge for them. And not only a win, but like a huge performance to get a bonus point before half time, to score some amazing tries through the pack, you know, through the backs. Absolutely brilliant. And. They've got all their subs on. They went down to 14, they lost some players, you know, and Wales came back hard at them and they still fought, they still held on. Yes, they got, it gave up five points, but uh, they usually have it. And you could see in that first half, they were playing with confidence. Now it's up to Wales. Wales are going to have to try and pick themselves up and try and find that confidence against France. Wales had started to make progress. They had gone fully professional themselves a couple of years ago. But it's Ireland's day, and it has been delivered. It's five tries and some wonderful performances right from the very start when they seemed to have Wales' number in terms of the tempo and intensity. They began the game, but with one player that seemed to stand head and shoulders above the rest was Eva Wafer with a try. She assisted another try and was a thorn of the Welsh side all afternoon. Let's get her thoughts. Eva Wafer, you are the Guinness Women's Six Nations Player of the Match. How does that feel after a performance like that? Oh, look, it's, it's brilliant, isn't it? Like, um, this has been coming for this group for a long time now. Um, like, the, oh, it's, yeah, it's undescribable. Like, the performance that these girls have put in and the hard work that we've done behind the scenes and just the backing that we've had from the RFU behind our, our backroom staff and then for us to go out and put on a performance, it's, it's just so special. Talk to us about the start to the game that you had uh, as a team. I mean, the, the first half performance, you put Wales away, such, such a clinical edge, um, and, and, and improving on the Italy performance and doing everything you said you were going to do in the build-up to this game. Yeah, look, like we were, we were hurting after the Italy game. Um, we knew it was something that we left behind us, and yeah, to come out and to, to really put the work in on the training paddock like over the, over the last two weeks, and then come in and just show that we deserve to be here and we deserve this win, it's, yeah, it's a good one. How much belief will you take from this as a team? Oh, we've had belief all along. Um, we've believed that we can get results and we've great confidence in, in the people that we have on the squad and in our coaches that, like, they're world class. We know we have world class players in our squad, so it's just about executing week in, week out. 
and it's only England at Twickenham next, you know, no bother to you at all. <laughs> um, are you looking forward to that one? It's a tight turnaround for it. Yeah, look, it's always nice playing at home, first of all. Like, um, this crowd, they're, they're absolutely unbelievable. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, we, we, could hear, we could hear you guys scream us on every second of that game. There was, there was parts of that game where, where we lost momentum, but you guys used our extra player and just setting us back on the right track. Congratulations, Eva. Thank you very Enjoy. much. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Yeah. Thoughts of Aoife away for there, what a performance she put in today. Carried with such threat, ferocity. And it set a platform on which Ireland could build. Scott Beeman, maybe the message is you've reached a level today that is a massive improvement in recent performances, but he obviously believes there's still an awful long way for this team to go. Yeah, there definitely is. You know, we've seen new caps today. You know, Shannon Ika Hihi for getting her, her game, getting a you know, green cap, amazing, playing for Ireland, getting your opportunity. We've seen Clean, Clean and Maloney getting on. And the more strong players we have, the likes of Grace Moore will be dying to get back into this team. And the more you have that, the more strength you build. You bring the level back up. The more youth you have, the more under 16s, under 18s, Ireland team's doing really well. They feed into that. And then suddenly you have the depth and strength that uh, Ireland need to push on. It also lead to a huge increase in the level of support being enjoyed by this Irish team. We see it with England. Supporters want to be part of a winning setup, and that English side brings such a massive following with them. Well, let's get the thoughts of some more of the Irish players. Co captains today, both brilliant, Sam Madden and Adele McMahon as well. We'll hear from her now. Adele, congratulations. You badly wanted the performance as a, as a team today. Was that beyond your wildest dreams, what you produced? Um, all week we spoke about, like, outside we're saying that we needed to get a win. We were just so sure of ourselves that if we stuck to our process, what we've been working so hard on, that the result would look after itself. And I think today was a reflection on that. I still think there's things for us to tidy up. We weren't perfect, and we'll chase that, and we'll bring it into next week. Is this a milestone victory for an Irish women's rugby team? There have been some dark days over the past couple of years, a lot of change behind the scenes to deliver a performance like that today. Yeah, I, I think I think the last this campaign has been a change in last year. I know we got losses at the start of the campaign, but it has been good for us. We've seen progress, we've seen clarity, we've seen girls executing roles week in, week out, and it was just a matter of executing that, and, and that's what we did today. You, you were left out for the Italy game, came back in today. Was that a sign that there's competition for places, that everyone has to, has to train up a storm to make sure they get their place in the team? Yeah, absolutely. Like This team isn't just about the 15 that start and the 23 that are on the match day. It's about every single one that comes into training from abroad that come in last minute. Like We are working together, the competition, week in, week out. That's how we get better. Our defence is getting better, our attack's getting better, and we're testing each other. So I think it's a great sign of this, this team in that we've got depth, we've got competition, and every week you're fighting for your place. And when you when you produce a performance like that and you improve on the things that everybody said you needed to do so, especially the, taking the opportunities like you did, especially in that first half, does that give you huge belief going forward? Yeah, absolutely. That means we can we, we can do it. We've got confidence again. Every week we're growing in confidence, whether it's from losses and, and from wins. We're learning the whole time, and we're just getting confident each week we go. Looking forward to England? Yeah, absolutely. Can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Yeah. Congratulations. Cheers, well thank done. you very much. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Fair play to you. Well done. Yes, they can approach that game of Twickenham in a very different frame of mind. Obviously, they'll be massive underdogs, overwhelming favourites England will be, and rightly so. But Ireland don't necessarily have to fear that game because they know they can they put building blocks in place in which they can now move on with. Yeah, and there's no pressure on them to win. You know, everyone expects them to lose. England, there's all the pressure on them. They're at home. And what a stage to be playing on, you know, going to Twickenham, huge crowd there it's an amazing place to play you know and and then you know they can put in the performance they can keep improving okay well time to get some reaction from the welsh side of things it's a difficult afternoon for them and they'll have to spend the next two weeks improving let's get the thoughts of their captain hannah jones hannah commiserations i know that was a really tough day for your team what was the difference between the sides today yeah, disappointed result, you know, that's just going to hurt, it's going to hit home. Um, I just think Ireland came out the blocks and they played better than us, we didn't turn up. And I think that, you know, when we get a chance in the opposition to undo, we've got to convert. I'm saying the same thing each week. 
Um, it, what was it about that, what you met from the Irish team today? They, they looked like a team possessed, like a team determined yeah. to put on a performance. It's about the want and it's about the heart. Uh, they wanted it more than us and they showed that in the, in the performance. How do you turn this around uh, in such a short space of time before your next thing and, and not let the disappointment of today affect your belief in yourselves? Yeah, I believe, you know, tough, tough innings give tough people. So we've got to stay tight. We, we've got to look at ourselves and look at everything. You know, we weren't good enough today and that's just, that, that's just it. Commiserations, Hannah. Thanks yeah, thank you. Yes, yeah, shorter words and a jolt, unsurprisingly. So, given unfortunately their performance today, there's not an awful lot she can say. This is where things lie after those three games. Italy and Scotland are still to Italy and France rather still to play, but Ireland are off and running. They've picked up a bonus point win today to move on to six points and into the top three and put them in a very good frame of mind as they head into the final two games against the English and against the Scots. Well, that's the afternoon as it has gone and a beautifully sunny evening here in Virgin Media Park in Cork City. Wales are three defeats from three, but Ireland, they are the story this afternoon. They have beaten Wales by 36 points to five. They're up and running in this year's Guinness Six Nations Championship. Thank you for watching. Scott, congratulations. You must be a happy man. Uh, it was one I think we needed to get off the back. Um, the girls have been working hard, hard in training. Um, and I'm delighted, delighted for them, really, just so they can see a bit of the, the hard work and what it works towards. Talk to us about the game plan. Before the game, you talked about little tactical things that you were hoping to work on. I mean, the kicking game was so good from Dana today. Um, the skills execution, the ball handling was so much better. Just, just uh, tell us about that side of it. Oh, no, the, it's kind of one of the one of the simple things about rugby, really. Play it, play it on your terms. So you want to play in the right areas of the pitch. Both Dana and Nicole are uh, uh, excellent, uh, excellent operators um, in, in putting the ball where we want it to be. Uh, we knew the, the Welsh would bring bring them all, and I think it was five minutes in or two minutes in, and we're, we're, we're having to defend the first ball. And I'm delighted for the girls that, that they were able to defend it, and then could really start to believe what could be achieved. Yeah, the, the Italy game, one of the, one of the talking points was taking opportunities. When, when you score but three tries in the first half, do you suddenly say, this is working, this is, they're actually learning and, and they're building on what happened the last in improving? Um, you're always looking to keep moving your performances on a level anyway. Um, I think we'll look back through that game and think there's still plenty of points that we've left out there. So we're an honest group. We'll actually go back and review that pretty hard, I think. Um, but I'm, I'm absolutely delighted for the girls that that they've been able to convert some of that pressure into points. Um, hopefully they start to believe in, in how we train and what it can lead to. And hopefully it just keeps building uh, the confidence bank. You know there, there have been some tough days for this team in the past before your time in charge and some of the players around that and some new players as well. Um, do you feel that today can be a real turning point and a real springboard for what's to come for this team? Uh, you know, it's just the next step. Um, it's, we, we know this group is still a really young group, still really inexperienced really. So there's, there's, there's plenty of things that we've got to keep growing. We're not going to be perfect overnight. I think, you know, it's a good result. It's a great result for us. It's a great result for a, a, a nearly full uh, Virgin Media Park to see. But there's still plenty to go out and we'll keep our feet on the ground and we'll, we'll keep working hard. And how many hours will you allow yourself to enjoy this before you start thinking about England? Oh, they, the games come pretty thick and fast now, don't they? Um, look, we're, we're really excited. We know there's going to be a big crowd next week and it's an opportunity for us to go and put another performance that hopefully shows the Irish public what we're about. Congratulations. Well done today. Thank Brilliant. you, guys. Well done. Brilliant.